Talking out of my ass. Number 67. And this, my 67th talking from my anus. A dilapidated, botulitic, cauterized, hairy clump of asshole meat that dangles from the bottom of my of my buttocks. Swaying in the wind, my anus hangs so low, almost touches the ground. It's loose and lax and, and without muscle. Just a, just a rancid, dangling piece of meat that hangs from my butt. Let me pull out the notes. Uh, I have some Diet Coke, so I figure, you know, might as well use it to some good effect. You know about the whole fucking uh, caffeine theory of weight loss. Like, if you drink caffeine, you're not going to lose weight. It's a theory, but I don't know. I kind of believe it. I don't lose weight when I drink caffeine. Including Diet Coke. Diet Coke is just loaded with caffeine and shit. Uh, mistake forgiveness burning bridges yeah so I'd caught my girlfriend basically uh, in a betrayal of me Now, me being the macho guy that I am, always talking about this bitch, that, this bitch did that. You know, you think I would come down on her with the the, the, the hammer, you know, because she betrayed me. She was talking to some other guy. She said she didn't want to meet him. She was just like bluffing him, basically, just to see what he would say. Like he asked her uh, or he, she asked him. When, when we going to dinner, like as a bluff, just to see what he would say, like she wasn't going to go, according to her. And uh, normally I would have fucking come down on her with the hammer, you know, I would have fucking laid into her and then I would have left her ass. But I didn't because I've been knowing her for the past four months. Been fucking her really well. Having my dick sucked by her so good. You know. She really takes care of my dick and me. For the past four months. So. You know I kind of wait. I wait out the fucking. The evidence you know. Does she love me. Against. Contra. Against doesn't she love me. Is she trying to fuck me over. And I went on the side that she loves me because, you know, the past four months, she's been really, really good, really good to me, you know. Sometimes she pays for dinner, sometimes she cooks for me, you know. She takes care of my dick really well. And I'm not saying, you know, just stay with the woman who's going to cheat on you just because she takes care of your fucking dick or anything like that. Of course, you should leave on her, leave her ass, but. The way she betrayed me was just so small, you know. She's basically just asked some guy to go to dinner with her. As a bluff, according to her. So I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. But if, of course, if it happens again, I got to fucking let that shit go. I can't be made a fool of. You know, I can't have people taking shits in my head. And then uh, me just being like, oh, I'm a, le I'm a weak, emotional bitch. And I got to stay with you because... I have fucking separation anxiety and shit. I don't, I don't believe in that shit. If a person fucking takes a shit on your fucking head, you know, get rid of their fucking ass. You might want revenge on them. That's up to you. You might go to jail for that kind of shit. But still, get rid of their fucking ass. Fuck them. No matter what the fucking the consequences are, if they take a shit on your head, get rid on get rid of their fucking asses.
And um, I don't know if you ever heard this story. You ever heard Jim Brewer, the comedian, goat boy, was talking about he did this one comedy skit or comedy, uh, what do they call him? A bit, that's what they call him, a bit. He did a bit about uh, abusive boyfriends to their girlfriends, right? And he's talking to the women, right? He's saying, ladies, if your boyfriend ever hits you, or every be beats the shit out of you, gives you a black guy, don't leave him. He's saying this, he's saying this to the ladies. Yeah, don't leave that fucking abusive asshole. Stay with them, because you'll probably get like, the most loving, caring boyfriend you'll ever get in your fucking life. He'll be so apologetic to you girls, to you women, that you'll probably get like the best boyfriend you ever had in your life because, you know, he feels so bad about giving you a fucking black guy. So that's what I'm hoping for my effect. I'm hoping if I forgive my girlfriend for this little act of betrayal, which I'm giving her a fuckload a benefit of the doubt, a fuckload of benefit of the doubt, because I don't think something would have happened between them, but I'm just going to give it the benefit of the doubt. But look at her now. She's like extra good to me now. She makes sure she tells me she loves me like 50 times a fucking day. She tells me, uh, you know, she's, she's buying me shit. You know, she gave me a gift card, you know, She's been sucking my dick really well and giving me pussy fucking very well. She didn't give me her asshole. I'm a sodomite for her asshole. I came good in her fucking asshole. Loaded up that asshole with my cum. See how good she's been? I caught her in that betrayal. Now she's good to me. Now she wants to be apologetic and make up for it. She's going to do everything in her power to keep me. For the time being. Until she uh, goes astray again. Of course, she says she wasn't. She wouldn't. But you know, you know, you know, you know. Shit always doesn't last forever. When the person says it's gonna last forever, <laughs> yeah, I got that situation going. So we'll see how long this fucking lasts. But for the time being, I got like the most perfect girlfriend I could ever want. You know, I'll take it. I guess because these bitches, man, trifling. Always playing some shenanigans on your fucking ass. They think the problem is they live in the fucking digital world and they don't realize everything they fucking capture, they do on that fucking phone is being recorded. So all that bullshit on Facebook and fucking and whatever else they're fucking using, uh, whatever app, whatever text messaging app, that's all being recorded. They can be caught up really easily. <clears throat> so yeah, that's my game plan. Accept accept the perfect girlfriend for what she is, time being, and monitor that shit. You know? Be undercover. You know, be the undercover boyfriend, the sleuth, the, the private detective, I'm like monitoring her. But whatever. You know, I trust her. The time being. <clears throat> Showdown theory of decision making. That's a note. Um, in life, you know, there's a pot. There's always something to win. At the every at every chain of decision making that you do, there's a there's a payoff. What is what I'm trying to say? You know, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow or whatever. A pot of gold at the end of the fucking yellow brick road or some shit. I don't know. But. Every decision you've made 
leads you to that pot of gold. Sometimes that pot of gold ain't so big. Sometimes it's fucking huge. That payoff is huge. The trick is to find the right decisions to lead you to that pot of gold. That huge pot of gold at the end of the fucking road. At the end of the rainbow. But how do you know which, which is the right decision? Case in point. Say you have a, a fight with somebody at your apartment, right? And you, and you get heated up, right? And then uh, you go to a bar because you want to blow off some steam, drink a couple beers, get drunk, you know? And then you get into a fight, a fist fight at the bar. And you start bleeding out of your mouth or some shit. So you figure now you got to go to the fucking drugstore, right? To get some bandages, to cut that, to get all that shit fixed up, right? And then while at the drugstore, you figure, hey, what the fuck? I'll buy a lotto ticket. And that lotto comes in. That lotto ticket comes in, right? And you end up winning ten, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000, 50000 whatever. As infinitesimally unprobable as that is, you won that money from the lotto. That means every shitty decision you made from getting drunk to getting into a fight with somebody at a bar to picking a to, to, to getting your mouth bloodied. Every shitty decision that you made led you up to winning that lotto ticket for 25 grand. You know, infinitesimally unprobable as that is. So that's my theory. Who cares? If the if the if the pot at the end of your fucking decision making chain is so big, it's so grand, it pays you off so well. And all you did was make shitty decisions before that. And get into fucking bad relationship with somebody or or whatever. You know. Get into fights with people. And that fucking fight. Somehow was part of the decision making chain. That led you to win $25,000. Or gain profit from somewhere. Then that decision. that, that and, then, and that terrible decision. That fucking shitty ass decision you made. Was the right decision. Anyway, that's my theory of showdown, decision theory making, whatever I'm trying to say. Ah, uh, the new trend, nationalism, which is, uh, anytime I think of nationalism, I think of Nazis. Because the Nazis, they had that whole cult of personality group thing going on. It's like when Hitler was giving his speeches, right? And he was doing the Zig Heil salutes and shit, right? And the masses before him as he spoke were echoing or mimicking him. Doing the same Zig Heil with him. He'd say Zig Heil and they'd all, whatever, 20,000 people listening to him speak would yell out Zig Heil in unison, right? See, but the thing with Hitler was he had a doctrine, a philosophy behind that Zig Heil salute. It was like that Zig Heil salute meant something to him. He like he had like a whole fucking a whole plan. You know, and uh, the Zig Heil salute was just the tip of the iceberg. You can look at that zip by Zig Heil suit as the you know, as the iceberg in the middle of the ocean. You see like maybe five percent of that iceberg, but there's a whole ninety five other percent, you know, underneath the surface of the water. 
So that Zig Eil salute carried a lot of weight with Hitler, right? But then you had the response from the audience doing Zig Heil's. Now maybe somebody, maybe some of them knew about the, the, the fucking, um, the philosophy of the Nazis. But I'm, I, I, I would, you know, I would, I would say it's, 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 it's safe to, to assume that maybe, you know, a lot of those people didn't even know what the fuck the Zig Heil salute meant. You know, maybe they knew about it. They maybe they had a little inclination about the Nazis. They probably thought, oh yeah, and this this Nazi party is gonna get us fucking ahead in life. Give me a head in life, you know? Zig Heil like a motherfucker. Zig Heil, Zig Heil, Zig Heil, right? But they didn't know like the whole philosophy, the doctrine of the Nazis, you know. They didn't read Mein Kampf or anything, you know? They didn't know fucking Hitler, you know. Was going to put the Jews in the fucking, you know, prison camps and, and kill them off, you know. And. Uh, so that, that that's what that's what cult of personality is. Group think. It, it's some it's not really group. Think, it's not tied into group think, but it is kind of because. Maybe you had like 10 or 20 people who actually knew what Hitler's ideas were. But the other fucking 28,000, whoever, 20,000 who were listening to him, were just kind of like doing it without really knowing what this fucking Hitler guy was all about, right? So this ties into... Today, right now, this this ties into fucking present day. People are always speaking about nationalism. Nationalism. Patriotism. And that kind of shit just sickens me, you know? Because it reminds me of that group think. That, that fucking... You know, it's just a word. It, it, nationalism. Nationalism. It's a, it's a word, right? But do you really know what nationalism means? And patriotism? I'm sure you know what patriotism means. But it also has carries connotations of just groupthink. Like, you absorb the word, you kind of know what it means. But do you really know what it means? Nationalism? It has that kind of fucking, you know, blindless or... or or uh, blind faithfulness. That that is so characteristic of, of people who are in groupthink mode, you know? They see a hundred people going, yeah, nationalism, nationalism, nationalism. So they say, sounds good to me. Yeah, nationalism, nationalism. That whole groupthink mode. Well, you're not really, or you abandon all like critical thinking. And questioning of everything and being skeptical of everything, which you should be. I mean, question every fucking thing, right? But, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, this nationalism, this, this cry, these cries of nationalism, it, it almost disgusts me, you know? Because it abandons all fucking independent thinking. And abandons yourself to the fucking, the, 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 uh, you know, the group think. You, you abandon all critical thinking, all skepticism. And, uh, and absorb yourself into the fucking mode of the group thinker. The unthinking group thinker. The, the person who just follows the fucking herd and does whatever the herd does. I got some of that, that that spiel I just gave from uh what do you got? Closing the American Mind by Alan Bloom. Yeah.
hastiness in decision making slash burning bridges. Um, yeah, this whole girlfriend fiasco that I've just had recently. Like I said, I was about to burn bridges with this chick, right? Because I caught her in this act of betrayal. Young me would have just said, okay, listen, bitch, fuck yourself. Bye. But old me sees that, you know, young me was too hasty in his decision making. In my decision making when I was younger. I was too ready to burn bridges with people, you know. Too, re too ready to just say, ah, oh, fuck that motherfucker, right? Instead of realizing maybe I can still fucking, you know, squ squeeze something of value out of this person, you know? Instead of being just like, man, fuck you, man. Whatever, right? Instead of burning that bridge. Older me is saying, well, you know what? Let's not let's not be so quick to fucking burn bridges with this person. Let's see what I can get out of this person for value. Maybe it's uh you know monetary value or emotional value. Well, let's just see what the fuck we can do with this shit. With this person. Who fucking who kind of shit on your head? I mean, I'm not saying if somebody fucking fucks you over big time, takes a big dump on your fucking head, you should keep him around. But if it's small enough, you know, the shitting on your head, if it's small enough, that shit, that turd sitting on your head, maybe you kind of ignore it in hopes of, uh, you know, attaining something, uh, some more, attaining value out of that person. Maybe you don't burn the bridges so quick. Anyways, 23 minutes, almost. Uh, this will conclude my 67th talking from my asshole. Good luck dying or getting your dick sucked or splooging your fucking, your water coming at bitch's asshole or her pussy. Signing off.